January 17. Pharaoh invites Jacob to Egypt. The news soon reached Pharaoh's palace. Joseph's brothers have arrived. Pharaoh and his officials were all delighted to hear this. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, This is what you must do. Load your pack animals and hurry back to the land of Canaan. Then get your father and all of your families and return here to me. I will give you the very best land in Egypt, and you will eat from the best that the land produces. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, take wagons from the land of Egypt to carry your little children and your wives, and bring your father here. Don't worry about your personal belongings, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. So the sons of Jacob did as they were told. Joseph provided them with wagons, as Pharaoh had commanded, and he gave them supplies for the journey, and he gave each of them new clothes. But to Benjamin he gave five changes of clothes and three hundred pieces of silver. He also sent his father ten male donkeys loaded with the finest products of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain and bread and other supplies he would need on his journey. So Joseph sent his brothers off, and as they left, he called after them, Don't quarrel about all this along the way. And they left Egypt and returned to their father Jacob in the land of Canaan. Joseph is still alive, they told him, and he is governor of all the land of Egypt. Jacob was stunned at the news. He couldn't believe it. But when they repeated to Jacob everything Joseph had told them, and when he saw the wagons Joseph had sent to carry him, their father's spirits revived. Then Jacob exclaimed, It must be true! My son Joseph is alive! I must go and see him before I die. Jacob's Journey to Egypt So Jacob set out for Egypt with all his possessions. And when he came to Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. During the night, God spoke to him in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he called. Here I am, Jacob replied. I am God, the God of your father, the voice said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make your family into a great nation. I will go with you down to Egypt, and I will bring you back again. But you will die in Egypt with Joseph attending to you. So Jacob left Beersheba, and his sons took him to Egypt. They carried him and their little ones and their wives and the wagons Pharaoh had provided for them. They also took all their livestock and all the personal belongings they had acquired in the land of Canaan. So Jacob and his entire family went to Egypt, sons and grandsons, daughters and granddaughters, all his descendants. These are the names of the descendants of Israel, the sons of Jacob, who went to Egypt. Reuben was Jacob's oldest son. The sons of Reuben were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul. Shaul's mother was a Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah, though Ur and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. The sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun were Sirid, Elon, and Jalil. These were the sons of Leah and Jacob who were born in Paden Aram in addition to their daughter Dinah. The number of Jacob's descendants, male and female, through Leah, was thirty-three. The sons of Gad were Zephon, Haggai, Shunai, Esbon, Eri, Eridai, and Arlai. The sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvai, and Beriah. Their sister was Sira. Beriah's sons were Heber and Melchiel. These were the sons of Zilpah, the servant given to Leah by her father Laban. The number of Jacob's descendants through Zilpah was sixteen. The sons of Jacob's wife Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph's sons, born in the land of Egypt, were Manasseh and Ephraim. Their mother was Asenath, daughter of Potipharah, the priest of An. Benjamin's sons were Bela, Bikur, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Muppim, Huppim, and Ard. These were the sons of Rachel and Jacob. The number of Jacob's descendants through Rachel was fourteen. The son of Dan was Husham. The sons of Naphtali were Jazil, Guni, Jezer, and Shillam. 
These were the sons of Bilhah, the servant given to Rachel by her father Laban. The number of Jacob's descendants through Bilhah was seven. The total number of Jacob's direct descendants who went with him to Egypt, not counting his sons' wives, was sixty-six. In addition, Joseph had two sons who were born in Egypt. So altogether, there were seventy members of Jacob's family in the land of Egypt. Jacob's family arrives in Goshen. As they neared their destination, Jacob sent Judah ahead to meet Joseph and get directions to the region of Goshen. And when they finally arrived there, Joseph prepared his chariot and traveled to Goshen to meet his father Jacob. When Joseph arrived, he embraced his father and wept, holding him for a long time. Finally, Jacob said to Joseph, Now, I am ready to die, since I have seen your face again, and know you are still alive. And Joseph said to his brothers, and to his father's entire family, I will go to Pharaoh and tell him, My brothers and my father's entire family have come to me from the land of Canaan. These men are shepherds, and they raise livestock. They have brought with them their flocks and herds and everything they own. Then he said, When Pharaoh calls for you and asks you about your occupation, you must tell him, We, your servants, have raised livestock all our lives as our ancestors have always done. When you tell him this, he will let you live here in the region of Goshen, for the Egyptians despise shepherds. Jacob Blesses Pharaoh Then Joseph went to see Pharaoh and told him, My father and my brothers have arrived from the land of Canaan. They have come with all their flocks and herds and possessions, and they are now in the region of Goshen. Joseph took five of his brothers with him and presented them to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh asked the brothers, What is your occupation? They replied, We, your servants, are shepherds, just like our ancestors. We have come to live here in Egypt for a while, for there is no pasture for our flocks in Canaan. The famine is very severe there, so please, we request permission to live in the region of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Now that your father and brothers have joined you here, choose any place in the entire land of Egypt for them to live. Give them the best land of Egypt, let them live in the region of Goshen, and if any of them have special skills, put them in charge of my livestock too. Then Joseph brought in his father Jacob and presented him to Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. How old are you? Pharaoh asked him. Jacob replied, I have traveled this earth for one hundred and thirty hard years, but my life has been short compared to the lives of my ancestors. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh again before leaving his court. So Joseph assigned the best land of Egypt, the region of Ramesses, to his father and his brothers, and he settled them there just as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph provided food for his father and his brothers in amounts appropriate to the number of their dependents, including the smallest children. Joseph's Leadership in the Famine Meanwhile, the famine became so severe that all the food was used up and people were starving throughout the lands of Egypt and Canaan. By selling grain to the people, Joseph eventually collected all the money in Egypt and Canaan, and he put the money in Pharaoh's treasury. When the people of Egypt and Canaan ran out of money, all the Egyptians came to Joseph. Our money is gone, they cried, but please give us food or we will die before your very eyes. Joseph replied, Since your money is gone, bring me your livestock. I will give you food in exchange for your livestock. So they brought their livestock to Joseph in exchange for food, in exchange for their horses, flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle and donkeys. Joseph provided them with food for another year. But that year ended, and the next year they came again and said, We cannot hide the truth from you, my lord. Our money is gone, and all our livestock and cattle are yours. We have nothing left to give but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your very eyes? Buy us and our land in exchange for food. We offer our land and ourselves as slaves for Pharaoh. Just give us grain so we may live and not die. And so the land does not become empty and desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. All the Egyptians sold him their fields because the famine was so severe, and soon all the land belonged to Pharaoh. As for the people, he made them all slaves, from one end of Egypt to the other. The only land he did not buy was the land belonging to the priests. They received an allotment of food directly from Pharaoh, so they didn't need to sell their land.
Then Joseph said to the people, Look, today I have bought you and your land for Pharaoh. I will provide you with seed so you can plant the fields. Then, when you harvest it, one-fifth of your crop will belong to Pharaoh. You may keep the remaining four-fifths as seed for your fields and as food for you, your households, and your little ones. You have saved our lives, they exclaimed. May it please you, my lord, to let us be Pharaoh's servants. Joseph then issued a decree, still in effect in the land of Egypt, that Pharaoh should receive one-fifth of all the crops grown on his land. Only the land belonging to the priests was not given to Pharaoh. Meanwhile, the people of Israel settled in the region of Goshen in Egypt. There they acquired property, and they were fruitful, and their population grew rapidly. 